Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number five in the directory traversal module titled File Path Traversal Validation of Startup Path. All right, before we continue with the video, I'd like to announce that this video is part of a course that I offer on my academy. Now you might be wondering, why would I buy a course that is made available for free on YouTube? Well, there are four reasons why you might want to do that. Number one is that you gain early access to recorded material. As soon as I record new videos, I make them available through my course right away. Whereas on YouTube, they'll only be released on a weekly schedule. Reason number two is that you gain access to a Discord channel where you can ask questions. The Discord channel is divided into topics that we cover in the course, and if you run into any issues, you get to ask questions about anything related to the course material. Reason number three is that you no longer have to deal with YouTube ads or sponsor messages. And last but not least, reason number four is you get to support me. Any revenue generated from this course will go back into maintaining the academy and creating more videos and courses that will be made available for free on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested in buying the course, make sure to check out the link in the description. And that is it. Let's go back to our video. If you do not have an account on the Web Security Academy, you can get one by visiting the URL portswigger.net slash websecurity and clicking on the sign up button. I already have an account and I am logged in. So to access the exercise, I'm going to click on Academy, go down, select the learning path, go down again and select directory traversal, and then go down one last time to lab number five, titled File Path Traversal Validation of Startup Path. All right, let's get started. This lab contains a file path traversal vulnerability in the display of product images. The application transmits the full file path via a request parameter and validates that the supplied path starts with the expected folder. To solve the lab, retrieve the contents of the etc passwd file. Okay, so the target goal over here is to exploit the path traversal vulnerability and retrieve the contents of the passwd file. Let's access the lab. And notice over here that this is the built-in browser in Burp, and so all my requests are already being intercepted in Burp. Now you'll see over here the application retrieves images from the server and displays them in the browser. And the request that is responsible for retrieving the images is this one over here. So we're going to send that to repeater. And then in repeater, we're going to click on send. And you'll see over here for the regular image 67.jpg, it's a 200 OK message and it retrieves the content of the image. So again, every time you see an, any place in the location where it's user supplied input that potentially retrieves files from the backend system, you should test it for path traversal vulnerabilities. You should also test it for vulnerabilities like remote file inclusion and local file inclusion. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is make note of the fact that it has the entire absolute path of the image. So that might be important. So I'll just copy that before we remove it and put it in here and then see if it accepts any absolute path. So let's say etc pass wd, hit send, and it's missing the parameter file name, which is weird. So they don't have proper error management over there because I do have the parameter file name. Um, so my guess over here, it doesn't accept any absolute paths. It requires that the path start probably with this uh, specific folder or this specific path. So var dub 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 and then images. And so let's see if we could potentially exploit that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the path traversal sequence to get out of these three directories and then go to the root directory. And then from there, access the etc passwd file. Let's hit send. And it works. All right, so it dumps the content of the passwd file. And if we reload the page over here, you should see the message that says, congratulations, you solved the exercise. All right, we do. So we successfully completed the exercise by exploiting the vulnerability manually. Now let's script it in Python. So 
So just like with the other labs, it should be relatively easy because it's all done in one request and it's unauthenticated. So the first thing that we're going to do is import all the libraries that we're going to need. So the sys, the request library, and the URL lib3 library. And then we're going to disable insecure request warnings. So URL lib3 dot disable warnings. URL lib3 dot exceptions dot insecure request warning. And then we're going to set our proxies configuration. So HTTP traffic should be sent to burp, which is running on HTTP 127.0.0.1. On port 8080, and all HTTPS traffic should also be sent to Burp, which is running on HTTP 127.0.0.1 port 8080. This looks good. Next, let's define our main method. So if name is equal to equal to main, then call the main method and we'll define it right over here. So def main, if the length of the command line arguments is not equal to two, then the user didn't run the program correctly. So the first thing that we're doing is ensuring the user runs the program correctly. And if the user doesn't run it correctly, then we're gonna print the usage instructions which is the name of the program with the URL. And the name of the program is taken from the command line argument. And then we'll also print uh, example instructions. So the name of the program and then the URL example.com. And that could be any URL really. I don't know if that's a real URL. All right, and then argv0 to extract the name of the program from the command line. And because the user ran it incorrectly, we're just going to exit the program. So it enters this if clause if the user runs it incorrectly. Now let's assume the user did run it correctly. The first thing that we're going to do is create a variable called URL and set it to the value of the second command line argument. And then we're going to print the statement exploiting directory, traversal, vulnerability. And to do that, we're going to call a custom function called directory, traversal, exploit. And it takes in the URL. And this is a function that we're going to create ourselves. So let's define that function, def directory traversal exploit. And again, it takes in the URL. The first thing to do is set the URL of the vulnerable path. So that would be the URL of the main application plus the path that contains our exploit, which is this one right over here. Let's copy that and put it in here. This looks good. And then the next thing to do is just perform the request. So request.get. The reason we said get is because it's a get method right over here. And then we're going to say image URL set verified to be equal to false and then proxies to be equal to proxies because we want the request to be sent to burp. And now I need to verify that my exploit worked. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to look for this specific string in the response. So let's copy that. Put it in here. If it's in the response, so in r.text, then I'm going to print exploit successful. I'm also going to print the following is the content of the past WD file. And to dump the content of the file, I'm just going to print the response of the request, so r.text. 
All right, this looks good. Now this assumes that it did run correctly. If it didn't run correctly, then I'm gonna print exploit failed and I'm gonna exit the program because the exploit did not work. All right, this looks good. Let's review it. So the first thing we do is check if the user ran the script correctly. If they did, then we set the URL variable of the vulnerable application and we call the function directory traversal exploit. This function essentially all it does is perform this request that exploits the path traversal vulnerability and dumps the content of the passwd file. Okay, let's hope this works. Terminal, new terminal. And then we're going to say python3 directory traversal lab05.py and the URL of the application, which likely timed out, and it did. So we'll open another instance of that. Let's copy that, put it in here, and remove the trailing slash because that would mess with my script. And hit enter. And here we go. It says, congratulations, you solved the lab. If you look over here, it says, this, it, it says the exploit was successful and it dumps the content of the passwd file. All right, so we successfully completed the exercise by exploiting the vulnerability manually and then scripting it in Python. In the next lab, we'll look at a more complex case of directory traversal vulnerabilities. If you liked the video, hit the subscribe and share button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Also, make sure to check out my course if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one. Thank you and see you in the next video.